And a good Wednesday evening from the Varsity Aces. I'm Greg Tartaglia. We'll be joined on tonight's Varsity Aces live show by some very special guests. Today is Wednesday, November 11th, 2020. So first things first, happy Veterans Day to all of our veterans out there, especially those who serve from in and around North Jersey. Hi, Jasper. And uh, coming up shortly, uh, we'll be joined by my colleague, Paul Schwartz. To this week, however, um, we're coming up on an anniversary not necessarily a happy anniversary, but uh, as someone told me earlier this week, out of something negative, a lot of positive has come out of that, and that is the uh, tragic plane crash that killed the Marshall football team, players, coaches, a number of fans on November 14, 1970. That anniversary, 50 years, is coming up this weekend. If you've been reading NorthJersey.com, you know we have some stories for you, uh, people of memories of the players that were involved, several of them from New Jersey. And of course, it will be in the record as well if you would like to uh, scrapbook, as some of us like to do. But anyway, we'll work, we will welcome in uh, my Varsity Aces colleague, Paul Schwartz. Our guests this week are Tom Shoebridge of Lindhurst. Tom is the brother of Ted Shoebridge, an outstanding Lindhurst quarterback who was unfortunately on the plane uh, with the 1970 Marshall team. We also have a guest from the 1971 Marshall team, which was prominently featured in the We Are Marshall movie that uh, helped get the team back on the field, Keith Carl of Elmwood Park. He will join us. Uh, before we get to that, Paul, I know that you, unlike me, you were around when this was going on and, and maybe lived through a little bit of this. There are a lot of strong North Jersey connections to Marshall. Uh, so certainly we welcome any North Jersey people as well as any Huntington, West Virginia people who might be joining us tonight. Uh, but Paul, your, your thoughts as we approach this anniversary, uh, 50 years is, uh, it's a long time, but a lot of these memories are still fresh of, of the people uh, who were involved. What's remarkable is um, that they're a year older than I am. I remember Teddy Shoebridge when I was in high school. I remember Art Harris of Passaic who died. I actually found an old baseball scorebook from my senior year at Teaneck and he played, he was a very fine baseball player as well. And we played against them in the state tournament in baseball. Uh, obviously, Marcello Latterman, who was the third member of the team. And Keith Carl's dad, Ken Carl, became the high school football coach at Teaneck the year after I graduated. So all these names are, are really familiar to me. And it's, it's hard for me to believe that 50 years have passed, but it's also, it's still... It, it's still a remarkable how the the memories of these people have lived forever and will live forever. This and was four, that incredible. Four quarter. New Jersey players who were members of the 1970 Marshall team that died in the plane crash. Teddy Schubert was the quarterback from Lindhurst. Uh, his high school teammate, Marcelo Lotterman, was the kicker, one of the only soccer-style kickers at that time. Uh, you had Kevin Gilmore of Harrison, who now is actually in the same conference with Lindhurst, although they weren't at the time. And of course, Art Harris of Passaic, there's some connections there too, and I'm sure we'll talk about them with Tom Shoebridge, Keith Carl, gentlemen, welcome to Varsity Aces tonight. Thanks. I, thanks. Uh, Tom, I'll start with you. Uh, I actually spoke with you for a story that uh, was published on NorthJersey.com already this week, and you had a lot of great memories. One of them I found very interesting, well, actually a couple of them. Number one, the fact that Marcelo Lauterman, who was the kicker, transferred from Passaic to Lindhurst. That's we kind of did that in the story, so we don't have to get into that. But also that Art Harris and Passaic were one of the teams that beat Lindhurst, the team that your brother quarterbacked uh, in 1967. And I think he had a, a big play in that game. Tell us about some of the connections that were made before all of uh, the players ended up going on to Marshall. Can you? Well, you know, um, we were in a Passaic Valley football conference, which was uh, one of the uh, top conferences in the in the state. A lot of group four schools. We were a group three at the time, Passaic, Clifton, so on. But uh, we had a big outstanding rivalry with, with Passaic. Um, the year before, the backfield was Jack Tatum and, and Artie Harris. Uh, they actually had an outstanding offensive tackle named Ron Mikulacek, who was in Artie's class, and he went to Marshall too, although he did transfer out after a sophomore year. He actually ended up playing with the New York Giants for a while. But, you know, in those days, there was no social media. So you played against these kids in football, basketball, and baseball, and you got to know each other. And, um, you know, that's how the relationship started. And, 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 I, I know that uh, your brother Tom had a hand in helping uh, Marcelo get to um, Marshall. And, uh, Paul, I know that uh, – 
there was actually another connection, wasn't there, for, uh, you know, kind of open the North Jersey pipeline to West Virginia? Well, I mean, uh, Tommy, there was a, a connection. I, uh, Can you tell us about how so many North Jersey players ended up there, including Keith, the following year? Um, you were breaking up. Is that my question? Yes. Yes, yes Tom. Well, I, I, there was a number. Of, Perry Moss was coming into – Marshall University was a down-and-out mid-American conference football team. And uh, they wanted to rebuild it. They wanted to invest some money. Uh, for Teddy's sophomore year, they were going to have a brand new uh, AstroTurf stadium was gonna, was built. So uh, Perry Moss, who was an, uh, an NFL and a, uh, a pro football quarterback coach, he was hired as the coach. So he came around North Jersey with a fellow by the name you're probably going to know of, Granitell, of, of um, Don Bosco fame. Matter of fact, I think the field is named after him. It is. Everyone's and, you know, yes. The financial backing that Perry got I, because they were friends and um, the connection that they had told Perry that there's a lot of tremendous talent in North Jersey. So between my brother and two other players from Linhurst, Mo and Marcelo the year after, our tailback, uh, Jimmy Fonseca, Mike Okowski, were in Teddy's class. They went down there. Artie Harris. Ron Mikulacek, um, these guys were all recruited through that connection um, with the Granitelle family that Perry Moss had. So that's, I think, what started the North Jersey connection down to Marshall. And, you know, in those days, there was over 100, maybe 125 scholarship players. You could get lost in the shuffle. But when you go down to a small school, mid-American conference school that's rebuilding, you're going to get your opportunity to play. And, you know, that was a, an also selling point for these guys to get these great athletes to go down there because, you know, guys like Ronnie Mikulacek, Teddy Schubert, you know, um, Artie Harris going to Marshall. These guys had offers from every major Division One in the country. Yeah. <laughs> Keith, how did you get into that? How did you become in that mix? Well, it, I mean, I, like most of, of, you know, the good athletes that came out of North Jersey, you had your pick of universities. You just had to have the smarts to be able to get in. And, uh, and I had, uh, you know, wanted to go to Penn State with Bob Nagel. And Bob was our quarterback, and I was the center that year. Well, they, they, they flip-flopped back and forth to, uh, you know, half-back the quarterback uh, for two seasons. But, but we were, you know – we were we were widely sought after by uh, major universities throughout the country, and uh, Marshall. You know, I, I I had never really knew of Marshall when they recruited me, and uh, and and I went down and just fell in love with it. Uh, you know, who, who who was one of the first people that I met was Teddy Shoebridge, and uh, you know he kind of took me under his wing and introduced me to some of the other guys, you know, from back home. And, you know, I just felt comfortable. And, uh, and, and we had a, you know, we, we had a good winning formula started down there. And, and uh, Keith, uh, I've written about you and you'll, that'll be in tomorrow's paper and online later uh, tomorrow as well. But um, you told the story, you were actually on the campus on the day of the plane crash and initially, there had been some discussion as to whether the freshman team was going to travel to East Carolina that same week, correct? Yeah, they had talked about that early in the week during practice because what Tommy was saying before, they were they were in this re rebuilding program, brand new stadium, AstroTurf, that everybody gagged on for the first, <laughs> first couple of months because of the glue uh, smell. But, you know, um, yeah, I mean, it was it, it was un, an unusual time down there. And uh, and, and we played we played our hearts out for, for everybody there. And, uh, you know, when when you can live and eat and, and breathe and sweat and, and hit each other to death three times a day. Uh, over over in a three month period, you you gain a really strong bond in a quick period of time. And you you told me a story about Teddy 
um, when they would go to play. I, don't oh, know, yeah. Tom, I think this is going to come as a surprise to Tommy. So tell the story. Yeah, well, every every away game, you know, Teddy would Teddy would just you know he'd flip me his car keys and go have a good weekend. All right, and and I mean he had the most beautiful. Uh, I don't remember if it was a, a, an Impala a GTO, but you know convertible, and I was like, oh, I am going to be the king of campus. <laughs> but uh, but that's just the kind of person Teddy was. You know, he just, uh, you know, he, yeah, I, I have that picture. I have that thing in my phone. But, yeah. uh, you know, he uh, he always said, he goes, man, he says, my senior year, wouldn't that be great to have you as my starting center? And, you know, you know look where the PVC conference took us. All right. So <laughs> yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll tell you, you know, Tommy will tell you that that was one tough conference. Oh and, yeah, and and I mean, East Patterson, Elmwood Park. We were a Group Two school, right? And we held our own, you yes, know. Sir. And and uh, you know, my my dad taught us a lot, you know. And and he said, as soon as that whistle blows, that first play, you hit that person across from you right in the chin. And he'll know who's going to control this game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's there's something about North Jer New Jersey, and specifically North Jersey players, that everybody always talks about that toughness, that little chip on your shoulder. Maybe it comes from playing in a little state. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> certainly you guys helped uh, our, our area get known out there. But I, I, in doing research for you know everything this week, I actually took a look back through the Marshall uh, record books, and – very interesting to look at comparing errors. In fact, I just saw something today about um, it may have been something Joe Namath tweeted out about, you know, uh, greatest quarterback seasons. If you adjust for quote unquote inflation, you know, what would like a Namath 60 season look like up against a Drew Brees, you know, 2000 season. So um, it, these are the types of places where we kind of get to discuss those sort of things. So, Tom, I really wanted to get some of your perspective, because, look, you know, we know about the plane crash and it's been written about. But one of the things that we were hoping to kind of bring out this week is, you know, the memories that we were trying to keep alive. And, and you know, Marcelo Lotterman, great kicker, one of the first soccer-style kickers of that era. If I look at his stats, okay, he made seven out of – he made less than 50% of his uh, kicks, you know, field goal kicks as a sophomore, but he was still the best kicker around. And your brother, you know, if I look at some of his stats, uh, his sophomore year was great. Junior year, uh, I think he might have had a few more interceptions and touchdowns, but still totally different game. Uh, you know, a lot tougher, more physical. You know, what are the things that, that you remember, you know, about your brother that, that stood out that maybe don't translate into the stats or maybe, you know, some of the photographs that we see today? Well, you know, the game is completely different than it was back then. And um, Teddy's sophomore year at Marshall was the year that all these kids came in that could have been at other universities uh, like himself. And like Artie, Joe Hood from Alabama, who was supposed to go to Alabama, but because of, you know, racial injustice and stuff back then, the story was that I got from Joe Hood's brother uh, that Bear Bryant called up to Perry Moore, said, look, I got a kid here for you, you know. Uh, so there were some great athletes on that team. Teddy's sophomore year, that team, that was a very good team. They were all young kids. They might have been a 500 team. Teddy set 18 team and individual passing records, total offense. He, I still have the magazine. Um, when the magazine came out for the seventh year, he was 18th in the nation in total offense with Joe Theismann and all these guys that became professional quarterbacks. Um, after Teddy's sophomore year, which was Perry Moss, the fellow that brought them all there, Perry Moss was – suspended during the sophomore year with a promise that he was coming back. Well, after all the, uh, a, a number of the allegations that were proven true and uh, illegal recruiting, um, Perry was let go. And then, like I said before, went to the Chicago bears, um, a number of kids transferred. And the story that a lot of people don't know is that Teddy and Ronnie Mikulacek from Pasek flew down to the university of Tampa that had football at the time. And, um, we're going to transfer. Teddy wasn't happy. Like Keith said, Huntington and Marshall was just a great place to be. Um, 
People were wonderful. The community was great. And Teddy wasn't the big city, uh, hot day, hot weather. But Ronnie Mikulacek transferred before the before Teddy's junior year, before their junior year. And then Ronnie went on to play for the New York Giants and so forth. Well, a story that a lot of people don't know. And Nate Ruffin told me this story himself. And it's in a number of the, the magazines and books that have been uh, published about the Marshall story. And, and Nate it's, Ruffin was one of the guys who was portrayed in the We Are Marshall movie. Well, yeah. Nate, Nate Ruffin is the main character, him and, okay. him and uh, uh, Coach Dawson. Well, I was sitting at practice in the, when I was down here for the uh, 99 season. We're sitting on a bench, me, Red Dawson himself. And I told Nate, I said, you got to tell me some stuff, man. Tell me some stuff like teachers said, what you guys did and hanging out. And, you know, I know all the football. He said, well, you know, me and your brother and Larry Sanders, we flew out to UCLA. Tommy Prothrow was the coach at that time. And um, we were going to transfer to UCLA. He said, but the Marshall Athletic Department was in such disarray because everyone had got, in, had got fired or dismissed that UCLA and Coach Prothro put them up for five days and they could never get their scholarship released to UCLA. And so they, they all got sent back. And then Teddy and, and Nate and Larry said, you know what, let's just stay and let's, let's build this thing. That's why we came here. And of course, you all know that Nate was hurt, didn't make the, tri the, the, the trip. Larry, you know, Larry passed away in a crash. But a number of players off that sophomore year, they had an outstanding team, either didn't play because Perry didn't come back or transferred out. And That's Keith, a story what? that a lot of people don't know. Keith, you came in that next year with a freshman class. How did that yeah. – how did, and then the plane crash happened, and now you all of a sudden became the veterans. The NCAA, as we know, gave a waiver for freshmen to play, but clearly the guys from your freshman team, along with Nate and one or two other guys who hadn't been on the plane, were the veterans. How did that go the next year? I know we've seen it in the movies, but how did it go for real? Well, the first thing we did was obviously we volunteered to play that last game of that season and, and they wouldn't allow us to do that, obviously. So, so now we're into this rebuilding program, not knowing what was going to happen. And, 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 you know, as it was portrayed in the movie, you know, a new coach came in and, uh, and, and we were like all excited. But like, how are we going to fill this team? Um, that was to be seen. Well, what had happened was uh, the University of Buffalo <clears throat> disbanded their football program that year. So we got just about everybody from the University of Buffalo, including their uh, uh, their, their coaches. And, and that was the reason uh, why they allowed Marshall to continue the football program, because we were able to fill – a team. So, uh, you know, and that, you know, you, you had to do something, right? I mean, you, you couldn't continue with, with, with a, uh, you know, now sophomores that uh, we're going to, we're going to play the season out. So uh, I, you know, as I look back on it over the years, it was really a miraculous move that saved the football program at Marshall. Um, and, yeah. And Ted and Tom and, and Keith, Tom, just so you know, I'm sure you do. Nobody threw for 300 yards between Teddy, Teddy's sophomore year and more than 20 years later at Marshall. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure he's still somewhere on that on that list. But Keith, yeah. I'm gonna get back to you. I know you met your wife at Marshall, but you didn't say your entire career at Marshall. Is that correct? Yeah, um, that's that is know, correct. Right. Yeah, I left after my sophomore year, and and it, and it didn't have anything to do with the school, did it? No, no. You know, I I just my heart was not in the game anymore after after such a, a tragedy, and uh, I tried to transfer out. Thought I was going to be able to do that. Uh, didn't work out as planned, and and uh, my wife Donna. You know, she she said, well, 
you know, if you're leaving, I'm leaving. All right. And, and I said, well, I'm, I'm going to go home and, you know, try, try to go to school at nights, go to work. What I did, she went back home. She was from Wheeling and uh, she went to work and said, we're getting married next year. I said, well, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> and, and we've been married for, for yes. 47 years. <laughs> and, and you now live in Brick, I understand. Uh, I do. Another big powerhouse uh, sports town, you know. <laughs> I, I notice a lot of fish there too. Is that uh, is that one of your hobbies? Oh yeah, there, you'll see deer heads back there and fish. And <laughs> Keith, Keith, yeah. I have a, I have a place in Lavalette for the last fourteen years. Get I, out I of spend, here, Tommy! I spend a lot of my retired time down there. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Well, uh, matter of fact, I, I, I was there till uh, Tuesday. Oh man, I was well, there. Get together. You gotta get together down there. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll tell you another another thing. Of course, you remember um, uh, the defensive back coach. Was his name slipping me slipping right now from Virginia Tech? Uh, he was a coach when oh. you were a freshman there. Frank yes. Loria. Frank Loria. Well, well yes. Frank Loria's son, who Frank's wife, the, the coach Loria, his wife was pregnant when the crash happened with Frank Jr. Frank oh. Frank lives in Brick. I mean, Frank lives in uh, Belmar. In Belmar, we should all get together. You uh, should. I would cherish that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And me, that, that's what we're here for. Varsity Aces Live, bringing people together again. We're talking with yeah. Keith Carl from Elmwood Park. We're talking with Tom Shoebridge from Lindhurst about uh, the Marshall uh, tragedy at the time, the plane crash. But again, so many things that have come out of it afterwards. And one of them, of course, is the movie We Are Marshall. Uh, Tom, I know you were one of the family members invited to the special screening when they first released the movie in 2006. Uh, Keith, you, there's a picture of you in the end credits, which is actually a picture of you in the final game uh, where it. they beat Xavier <laughs> on the last play and their first home game following, you know, in the year following the tragedy. Um, you, I guess maybe Keith is a place to start with this. You know, how much of that is accurate to real life and, you know, how much of it is, quote unquote, R-E-L, real life? Well, that picture was real life. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> And that was me jumping up as the offensive center, getting clipped by the defensive guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the movie, didn't they throw to the middle of the end zone? And that looks like they sort of went to the corner of the end zone. Oh, I'm he trying has, right? to, we, we went to the corner, you know, but that was 50 years ago. I yeah. don't remember what corner <laughs> we were running around. We were running around hitting people. That's what the offense was supposed to do. But uh, it was it was probably one of the highlight periods of my football career with that touchdown pass. It was just unbelievable. No did one you, expected us to do the, anything that year. Sorry, Keith. Uh, Tom, what did you take away when you first saw the movie? Well, you know, I had been down to Marshall many times. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time being a uh, former football coach. And um, I spent a lot of time with the football program there over the last 20 years. Um, and uh, I thought the movie was outstanding. Uh, it's a very emotional. It's very um, inspiring. But a lot of our, a lot of us, and, and so I'm like, I'm sort of like on the other side of where Keith is. Like Keith has a connection from before and after. And what we, what we have as family members is just, before and up until the movie was, it's just wonderful to tell that story. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have expressed uh, that as a motivational factor in their life, not even just for sports, but you know, that the, the movie, it tells, it really tells the story of Keith's team and the university and the community of what they did after the tragedy. It doesn't tell the story of, those kids, all everyone that perished. You can't tell that story. There's too many people. Okay. It doesn't tell the story of why did Ted Shoebridge go to Marshall. Then tell the story of how uh, outstanding the team was formulating as when they were sophomores. You know, it um, it's just it's just a different. You know, I talk to many people that have connections like I do, and um, the movie is fabulous. Don't get me wrong, we we do. But the movie is about 
uh, ash, you know, ashes to glory yeah. and what you do from there. But for us, you know, us that lost people, there was plenty of glory and we're so happy about the university and what's, what they've become and all the things that they have created from this. But like, like my family, everything stopped that day. It just was different. There was our, our family and I, myself and my brother, and my parents had two more kids to raise. Things were completely different. And um, so the, I really wish my mom and dad could have seen the movie and seen how inspiring what happened to her son and, those, and his teammates and those people, what they did to motivate people's lives, not just in sport, but in their everyday life when you have adversity and what, what, how this adversity that they had was the, at the highest level. And what you, the university and community and Keith and his teammates did to overcome it is inspiring for all of us in whatever we do in life. And, and what's remarkable, Tommy, it still serves as an inspiration today. That group, you said they don't tell the story of that group and how they got there. But they are Marshall today, and I know Keith talked about it with me in our story. They are as much Marshall as the football team oh. that won the national championship and the yeah, football that team that will play this weekend and everything else. Yeah. They Let are me, seeds of Marshall. Well, that's, that's it, what you said, seeds. Let me tell you, I'm going to tell you, as an adult and as a, a – a 30-year football coach, 40-year track coach, teacher. Um, I've been around a lot of athletics at all levels. I was asked to be the keynote speaker in 2014 on the 44th uh, anniversary. And, and of course, like Keith, you know, yeah. at the ceremony, yeah, yeah. at the, um, you know, on the 14th. And, right. you know, you had mixed emotions. And listen, I've spoken in front of teams and booster clubs and <laughs> But, you know, it's a little different animal that, you know, you're going to go speak in front of a couple thousand people at a very, very emotional thing for so many family members. And I thought about it for a long time. And like Paul just said, those people that were lost that day from the coaches and fans and, and the kids that were just on special teams that or the kids that were just made the trip, how happy they were to make that trip on their first time they were going to fly to a game. They all perished, but there have been so many great things that have come from that tragedy, scholarships, university developing into an outstanding academic institution, kids that maybe not would have gone to college, not just athletes, motivation for people across the country, people that have found inspiration and, and maybe even a savior to themselves for what happened there. Maybe that's why Teddy went there and he didn't go to Wake Forest or Arizona State. Maybe this, that was there. And listen, I'm not trying to get spiritual to anybody, but maybe that was their thing in life because they have touched so many people in their short period of time they were on earth. And they have helped people in so many different ways. And you're right, Paul, that they are the seed of what Marshall University and the Huntington community has become. And certainly uh, all week long, we've been telling the stories and those are the things we try to accentuate on NorthJersey.com. Gentlemen, we could probably go on all night with this and uh, I really appreciate you joining us and sharing all the great memories with us. But unfortunately, I think our time has run a bit short on Varsity Aces Live. Thank you, Keith. Keith Carl of Elmwood Park. Welcome. Thank you, Thank you. Tom, Tom Shoebridge of Lindhurst. Thank uh, you for having us. Yeah, but certainly. And uh, we urge you to keep reading all week long. This, too, will be put online when the show is over. Paul, thanks for joining me. You and I, by ourselves, could probably go on all night, could we not? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much as well to the audience for joining us, uh, whether you were in North Jersey, whether you were in Huntington, West Virginia, Marshall alum, like, uh, you know, so many, including Chad back here. Uh, we thank you for joining us tonight on Varsity Aces Live. We'll be back next week with a new edition of the show every Wednesday at 7 p.m. So again, for Tom Shoebridge and for Keith Carl, thanks to the guests for joining us. 
my colleague, Paul Schwartz. My name is Greg Tartaglia. We hope you enjoyed Varsity Aces Live tonight. Join us again next week. Have a good night.